How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Each One Reach One, hoping, man, and praying that I can teach and reach one with this lesson. Lord willing, of course, let us give all praise, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to our Heavenly King, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Thank you all for joining me today. We are still in our series, Prophecy and Promise. We're going to take a venture into the New Testament today. We're going to be reading out of the book of Luke. We're going to go see red letter, meaning we're going to hear from the king himself. And he's going to speak on prophecy. All right. So we're going to see how the prophecies which he spoke of in the New Testament, similar to the prophecies in the Old Testament, they had to come to pass because he said so. Now, some things already came to pass and some things are, are still yet to come. All right. But the thing is that we have an assurity, right? We have a surety that the promises, the promises of God are sure, right? They are faithful and true. And that none of these things, none of these prophecies of his shall fail. All right. So Luke chapter 21, verse five is what we're going to pick up from. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So again, you see, he says the days will come, meaning it's going to happen. There's no, there's no room for, for guessing and trying to, you know, figure out whether it's going to happen or not, because he says will come, not might, not maybe, not possibly, none of that kind of language, right? Guaranteed, in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be trodden down, that shall not be thrown down, rather. And we know from history that, what was it, like 30, what was it, like 37 years later after his death is when the temple fell? No, sorry, uh, 73 years later. Right, 73 years later, that the temple fell. And so, and, and it happened in the same way that he said that it would happen. Not one stone was left upon another. They were all thrown down. It was a lot more destructive of an, of an episode than what he even explained it would be. He spared them from giving them the, the details, the all the glory details of what would happen. But suffice it to say, if, if anyone had listened to him, they would have known what was to come. And then those that listened to him would have gotten out of there. But let us continue. And they asked him saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what shall, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, take heed that ye be not deceived for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and the time draweth near. Go ye not there therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified for these things must first come to pass and the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Right. And now we know in Revelation, it says it speaks about how many will be persecuted for their testimony. Right. And that has to happen. Right. There is a belief that that has already happened, in which case that would be right. It has happened. Remember, dual prophecies, prophecies are cyclical. It happens in in in, in different uh, time periods and different generations. Right. So the the prophets or not the prophets the apostles and the disciples who were told these things they did indeed experience these things right as well as the disciple the people that they made disciples of they experienced these things 
And so they, being the apostles and the disciples of Christ, were unable to escape the, the judgments. They were unable to escape prophecy. It had to be true. What Christ said was going to happen, it had to happen to them. And so even though they were, even though they were apostles and disciples, they couldn't escape tribulation, right? They had to go through it. And so why would you, as a Christian, believe that you would be able to escape the trouble to come and not experience any of the trouble that is to come upon the world? And the apostles were not able to escape. As the scriptures say, we must, we must through great tribulation enter into the kingdom, right? Through much tribulation, through great tribulation. So if we are told that we must come through great tribulation in order to get to the kingdom, where does the doctrine that says that you can get into the kingdom by being raptured, you're never going to get to experience any trouble? Where does that come from? That sounds like some feel-good doctrine. It sounds more like that prosperity gospel, more like the charismatic church teachings, right? Not something that has come out of the book. It is definitely not supported by the Bible. Here on this channel, we deal with the Bible. We deal with the word of God, all right? Not the word of men, all right? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. It, has ha it happened back then. Many of them died gruesome deaths. And there is a time that lies ahead of us where there's going to be people who are going to be persecuted for the word, for their testimony, and they shall be beheaded for their testimony, right? Now, think about it. He says that, that they're going to be beheaded. Which people do we know of in the earth today live by the sword and they have a habit of beheading their enemies? That's probably a good a good um, marker, a good identifier of who are going to be those people that are going to be persecuting those who believe in Christ for their testimony. All right? He says, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my namesake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. And your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So here this prophecy is being given by Christ. And what happened, what wound up happening is what is going to happen in the end of times is that there's always people who hear the prophecies and because of their unbelief, they find out the hard way. They're going to be the victims of their own unbelief. It happened during his time, and it and it happened in the subsequent time to follow, and it's going to happen in ours, all right? So they were given a warning. They were told that Jerusalem, Jerusalem was going to fall, the, the temple, the sanctuary was going to be destroyed. Not one stone shall be left upon another. They were given a heads up. That's what he does. He always gives us his prophecy. He gives us promises. He gives us a warning, a heads up before things happen so that when they happen, we know that he told us that they would happen and that we would believe in him. The prophecies are a way for us to get to know God, that he exists and that he is true, that his word is good, that he is God and none else, because who else would be able to call the end from the beginning, right? Okay, so Christ has to told the people, when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Listen, these are the day of vengeance. So in these days, this day of vengeance, He's telling you that he's, he's going to get vengeance on somebody. And who are these somebodies? These are Israelites, right? These are Israelites who he's going to wreak vengeance on. 
in 70 AD. They're being warned. And so what happened was those who believed in Christ, those who trusted in him and his word, they adhered, you know what I'm saying, to the to his warnings. So when 63 AD came around, because that's when it started, the completion of it was in 70 AD. But in 63 AD is when it began. And then that they had a time, they had seven years, seven years to follow his instructions. That's the number seven. We know how critical the number seven is. It took seven years to complete the work of destroying Jerusalem. There were seven years in which the people had to be obedient. Call, recall the words that he spoke, he had spoken to them. They had it in writing. It was being passed on word of mouth. The believers in him who were being persecuted by the quote unquote law keepers of their day, they listened and they got out of there. But who stayed? Who was there? Which people were there that got trodden upon? Which people got slaughtered? The unbelievers, the law keepers, right? Those who loved the law of Moses so much and hated Christ, didn't believe in him, didn't trust him, didn't listen to his word. The law of Moses was their God. It was their idol. They, they didn't believe that there was any way God would allow the sanctuary to fall. Even though Christ said it, they didn't believe him. They were trusting in what they believed. See, they thought they knew God better than the son did. They thought they knew better than the king who came from the most high God. They thought they knew God better than him. No, no way is he going to allow his, his holy temple and sanctuary to be destroyed. That's not going to happen. We can trust and the fact that we know he's not going to allow us to be destroyed. The same way he would not destroy the law of Moses. He would not put away the law. So this guy, Christ, he was a he was a, a, a fraudulent, false, false prophet. That's what many called him in his day. Fraudulent, false prophet, a blasphemer. Because he spoke against the law of Moses. He tried to put an end to the law of Moses. Not the law of God, not the Ten Commandments. The law of Moses. He tried to put away the law of Moses. No way. No way we're going to listen to this guy. He, know he, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anybody that comes saying anything contrary to the law of Moses is not to be believed. And we have Israelites right now in the awakened community right now saying the same things. They don't believe in the New Testament because they don't believe the Most High God, the Father, would do away with the law of Moses. So that is the entire reason why they don't believe in Christ because they don't believe the law of Moses would be done away with. Christ, Christ didn't try to uphold the law of Moses and try to push to the people that they need to, to um, live by the law of Moses. He pushed the, the Ten Commandments. And so those people died. Those were days of vengeance that came upon the Israelites. Now, there is a day of vengeance promised in the last days as well. Remember, cyclical goes around, comes around. In the, in the last days, in the day of the Lord, is also called the days of vengeance. And all his prophecies that are promised to come about, all of the things that are going to come upon the Gentiles, upon the heathen, upon the enemies of Israel, are going to happen. You can't get away from them. Not believing won't stop them from happening. You're not going to be saved by unbelief. Ignorance is not bliss. It is not. Ignorance is going to cause you to die a grievous death. He says all things are written, which are written must be fulfilled. Right? For these be the day of vengeance, so that all things which are written may be fulfilled. It written where? What is he talking about? What is he referencing? He's referencing the Old Testament. The same Old Testament that Christians say is done away with, not applicable because Christ came. Christ is referencing the Old Testament and is telling you that the day is going to come that all things which are written of in the Old Testament are going to be fulfilled. They have to be. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall, there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. 
and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And they did and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. How long, master? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. My Lord, again, repeat it for the people in the back. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What did the king say? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles have not been fulfilled. That's why Christ has not come back yet. He returns when the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. So since he is not back, that means the times of the Gentiles has not been fulfilled, which means what? Jerusalem is still su supposed to be trodden down of the Gentiles. There should not be Israelites in the land, possessing the land. It should be Gentiles in the land, in ownership of the land, ruling the land, governing the land until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That is prophecy. Anything else is counterfeit. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory, right? And when it says in the previous verse, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, he's talking about those in rulership, heaven as in rulership, not heaven as in up in the sky, right? Not heaven as in where the most high God is. No, heavens as in the rulership of the earth shall be shaken. The, the, because look what it told you before, the context clues. Men's hearts failing them for fear. That's shaken. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. That's why many are running to their bunkers. They're, they're prepping right now. They're trying to do what they can because they know there's a great time of trouble coming. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh for your redemption. Who was he talking to? The Israelites. He didn't say for redemption draweth nigh. He says for your redemption draweth nigh. Not, re not the redemption of the whole entire earth. And he spake to them in a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. Now, why did Christ speak to them in parables and not in plain language if he wanted everybody to understand his word, if he wanted everybody to understand what was to come, if he wanted everybody to be saved? Why didn't he, why didn't he speak plainly before all the people? Because it wasn't for everybody. As he says, it is given unto you to know the secrets uh, of God, to, know, to have the keys to the kingdom. It is a, it's for you to know the mysteries of God. It's for you to be able to break down his word, to understand his word and be enriched by it. It's for you to enter into the kingdom. It's for them to go through that broad way, right? That wide gate that leads them to destruction, right? That's why he spoke in parables because it's not for everybody. He didn't come to save the whole entire earth. Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, listen to this, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Right? And when he says this generation, he's talking about the generation of the people who are living when this happens. Behold the fig tree, because Israelites are the fig tree, right? Israel is the fig tree. And so Israel is, the, is God's time clock. You're supposed to know where we are in prophecy by watching his people, right? He says when when they begin to shoot forth, you will know that summer is nigh at hand and we are beginning to shoot forth now. Us wakening 
awakening right now, reclaiming our heritage, our ethnicity, our nationality, our customs and traditions, our, our God. You are witnessing, you are beholding the fig tree. We are now shooting forth. Summer is nigh at hand. You are seeing the signs that is alerting you to the fact that the end is near. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. But I thought he came to save the whole earth. No, he says, it shall come as a snare on them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, meaning a trap, a trap, because it's not meant for everybody on the whole earth. It's meant for those who are on, are on the inside, right? Those who are privy to the secret conversations and the secret conversations in our day and time come via the Holy Spirit who puts the word within us, who gives us ability to know, to understand things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to know or understand by any other means. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. See that? He's telling his people who he's talking to, pray always that they might be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Why? Because not everybody will escape. Not everybody will be able to stand before Christ. It's because it's not meant for everybody to stand. It's not meant for everybody to escape. That's why he spoke in parables. He didn't come for everybody. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the house of Israel, meaning the offspring of the man Israel, the bloodline, not converts, not whosoever believes. All right. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And that night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. All right. He, he abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. All right. And so we all know about the olive trees and, and so forth and how those are representative of, of the nations of Israel. Right. The, the kingdoms, the southern kingdom and northern kingdom. So you got to always keep the symbology in mind of what everything means, what it stands for, right? That that's the, that's the key. That's the key, you know, like in order to understand a map or something, you need the key. Well, you got to have the keys in order to understand the book. And the keys are given via the Holy Spirit. All right. So without it, you can't know anything. With it, there's nothing that that can be hidden from you. There's nothing that will be hidden from you, but everything is still delivered to all of us in, in measure, in process of time. We are breadcrumbed in our journey. Most High God does not drop a whole loaf of bread off in our laps. He doesn't even drop a, a whole slice of bread in our laps. He breaks it off and feeds it to us piece by piece. He sets each piece before us. We go, we pick up a piece, we eat. And every time we eat a piece, we hunger for more. So we, we travel further and he rewards us with another piece. Mm, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Mm, but we, it's a, it's, we don't get satisfied. We don't get satiated. We become, we become insatiable. We develop an insatiable hunger for the word, for his truth. So we're constantly walking towards him and he's constantly rewarding us with another breadcrumb and another and another. And he's leading us toward him in measure at the pace he deems necessary for each person. So don't let anyone make you feel bad about where you are in your journey. All right. There are some people who have awakened a lot longer than you that doesn't make them any more important or any more special than you. 
That's not how it works. Don't feel bad. Don't let anybody discount you as being relevant because you don't have the level of knowledge that they have. Again, your knowledge will come in time, Lord willing. All right. But stay patient. Stay faithful. All right. Stay humble. Understanding that all things are of the most high God. So you don't get scared of the things that are happening in the world around you. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Keep that in mind. Whenever you are feeling a little worried and you need a little faith booster, Psalms 91 is a great place to eat. It's built for these times. So read it daily if you have to, but read it often for sure. These are promises and prophecies that came from Christ. As you see, he referenced the Old Testament. He gave prophecies about what would come to pass after him and after his death, true to, true to his word, 73 years into the future. Right? It happened. It happened, right? So we know that promises made are promises kept by the Most High God, right? Promises made are promises kept by the Most High God, right? And my bad, you guys, I, I said 73 years, 37 years. I don't know why I keep saying 73 because those numbers are very key. When you understand numbers and you know how to watch for them, the number three, the number seven, the number 33, the number 37, the number 73, right? But yes, so Christ died and then 37 years later would be 70 AD, right? And that's when the destruction of Jerusalem took place, right? He said it would happen and it happened. The way he said it would happen is the way that it happened. Prophecy made, prophecy fulfilled. Promises made or promises kept. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to our Heavenly King and Redeemer, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. We give all thanks, praise, honor, and glory to our power grace and peace be unto his saints. If you have been reached, if I was able to teach you anything today or put something in your mind that you might have forgotten, brought it to memory, don't hoard it, pay it forward. Each one reach one. Shalom.